My guest today is Juan Yovet. Juan, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, David. Oh, thanks for joining me. I already know the answer to this question, but tell tell us what you do. I'm a partner solution architect within the Microsoft uh, America GPS group. I am focusing the data and analytics uh, solution area. So basically, I work with partners in designing and building and validating solutions focused on bringing analytics to end customers using the Microsoft Cloud. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yes, it is a great time. <laughs> and I knew it was a lot of fun. I knew what you did because we're teammates. We're on the same, uh, exactly. same group, on the same team. And um, you've been talking to me about something that I'm not really that familiar with uh, called Microsoft Fabric. Can you tell exactly. me what that is? Sure thing. So Fabric is a very new analytics offering from Microsoft, currently in public preview that was announced middle of May, end of May. And basically, Fabric is the next analytics platform. It's a unified analytics offering that brings together many different tools already present in the Microsoft Cloud, many different workflows of the different ways you build up towards insights from your data, right, into one single solution focused on being a SaaS solution, software as a SaaS, service, yeah. moving away from the infrastructure as a service or platform as a service analytics offerings that were popular up until this point. So it basically simplifies much more the way you think about doing analytics and the way you actually build insights from your, from your data. Okay. And, and the, one of the reasons I was confused when you first brought it up is there's already something called um, Azure Fabric and or Azure mm -hmm. Service Fabric. And I just want to make clear, that's not this. That's a totally separate thing that right. somebody decided it'd be a good idea to confuse mm -hmm. everyone. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a similar exactly. name. Right, this Very is Microsoft different. Fabric. Mm -hmm. Microsoft Fabric, exactly. Okay, and you said it's it's a, a solution that uh, com, uh, kind of a unified solution. I think was what you said. Uh, what uh, what do you mean by that? What's 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 unified in this? Well, if you think about analytics, it's very complex. There's many steps from the raw data to the the insight or the value from the data, whichever is the goal you're trying to get to based on the data you've acquired. So if you think about it, first of all, you will have all the data data ingestion right you have sources that are external not yours or you're like compiling information from from different places and you have to bring it to your own proprietary systems and then you have the whole like concept of the data storage what am i going to store my data what types of files how much how much is it going to cost me who is it going to be available to and then you moving on to okay now that i have the data and i have possession of it i need to enrich it because just raw data won't give you much value when you're thinking about analytics. So the whole process of data transformation, which is around data engineering, and then serving that transformed data, that refined data, a very common concept is the data warehouse. So just organizing your data on a relational database and just making a lot of tables that are related to each other, available to your end customers. And then you think about the next step and it's, what do I want to get out of this structured, organized data? I want to, to get value. So by, to get value of the data, many times you have to predict, hey, based on this data that I have, what can I draw from the past, uh, from, from the past data I've obtained? What can I learn from it? And how can I train a machine learning model to tell me what's going to come up next, which is what gives you the, the advantage on, on, your, on your competition, on someone who's not leveraging data analytics, right? So that's the data science part of it. Mm -hmm. And then you move on onto now that I have all these like great insights, how do I communicate those? How do I let my C-suite know? How do I let managers know what's happening and what decisions they have to make? Because at the end of the day, you can have great insights and great data, but if you're not transmitting those ideas to the right people so that they're able to make decisions, you're having no impact with that data and with those analytics. So basically what we mean when we say that Fabric is a unified solution is that we bring all these different steps along the way of getting to the final insight, we bring them all together and we serve them as one single service, as one single piece of software that you can interact with without needing to connect your data ingestion to your storage, your storage to your uh, data science, all of these different services that you could have 
in Azure, we have all these different services, right? We have Microsoft Data Fabric. Uh, sorry, we have a Microsoft Data Factory. We have uh, Azure Synapse Analytics. We have Azure Machine Learning Studio. We have Cognitive Services. We have all this suite of real-time analytics. So you have all these different resources that you need to know how to connect and how they talk to each other and how you provision all of them. So Fabric is taking away this complexity and bringing you the one place for all of your analytics where you can work on all these different steps, knowing that you're going to achieve the great value that all these different Microsoft cloud uh, products will offer you before without the need to integrate them. So that's what we mean when we say unified analytics platform. Okay, I think that makes sense. So, tell me if this is correct. It doesn't try to reinvent these services like like Azure Data Factory and ML Studio and oh, Data Lake, whatever. It, it it just brings those together for you. So, uh, and and makes it easier to connect them in some workflow, in some end to end workflow. Is that is that the whole idea behind it? Because we ha we have yeah. those tools already, and if mm -hmm. we were smart. We could figure out how to connect them together. We could read the documentation exactly. and and learn how to do that. It's that figuring out part that it's, is the real value of this. Is that right? That that's mostly right. That's the the big idea. But it it doesn't stay at just bringing them together. We're also optimizing each of the service and how they work together, okay. because by bringing them as a single offering you're no longer thinking about, oh, a data factory, a data warehouse, a data lake, data science. You're just thinking about fabric. And that allows us to optimize the experience and to be able to like fragment it into the different steps. But we do bring in a lot of innovation into the services. I think the, the biggest one is just the ease of use. Like okay. the, the interfaces you have to interact with, it's a big difference, right? It's much easier than having to learn all, all of these different tools on their own. Like basically the experience is very similar, even though they all accomplish different tasks. If you're familiar with Fabric, you're supposed to be able to go from the data factory to the data science without getting completely confused and without having to learn a new menu, new commands, new ways That's to it. interact, right? And then the other big thing is the performance underlying uh, in, in Fabric, because we all focus it around this uh, data lake house, data lake uh, that we're calling one lake. So this is bringing very, very good performance enhancements to, to the whole architecture and analytics that you will have with all these disparate resources. I see. So when you talk about optimization, you're talking about the optimization of the, the user's experience, the user's uh, time. So we don't have to spend time on what I'll call the plumbing of it. We can focus our time on solving the business problem. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, this this really appeals to me. I've been spending a lot of time thinking about developer velocity. And developer velocity is, you know, how can I get from the you know the conception of my problem to my deployment of my solution? How can I shorten that time? And it sounds like this is right up that alley. This is a part of you know data science velocity, I guess I would call it. If I don't know if that's a phrase, but I just invented it. I'm gonna copy that, copyright that right now. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's awesome. Um, tell me about the experience, though. Is it a uh, is there a user interface for this? Is it a, a blade inside of Azure? What? How do we do that? So this is building upon the existing Power BI service. If you think about Power BI, you have Power BI Desktop, where you can integrate your data locally and then make a model, make a model, make some reports, and then publish them to the cloud. But we also have the Microsoft Power BI service on the cloud where you can do all of this just through a web portal, right? Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, Power BI is well known for being a very intuitive tool, graphical friendly tool for not only developers, but also like data citizens, you know, who have access to data, but they don't have like specific SQL knowledge and they can still like interact with Power BI and get the most out of the data. So in terms of the interface and the experience, we're building upon Power BI. Okay, so if you're already able to bring in data sources to Power BI, make some basic transformations within the service, set up a model and then run analytics out of it, run reporting and dashboards, why shouldn't you be able to also do more in-depth connections with Data Factory and exper experience experiment with some machine learning in the data science portion. So we're basically building upon the Power BI web service experience and all of the different personas, a lot of all the different menus for the specific parts, they all look very similar. So for okay. anyone who's used Power BI in the in the past, that's very intuitive, but also it doesn't differ much from what it already was 
in these specific services. Like if you know the concepts around ADF and around Azure Machine Learning, it all follows a similar path as well. So we're kind of blending those two areas to make it user-friendly for everyone who's already had some kind of experience before or someone who wants to learn from you as well. Okay. I think you, before we start recording, you mentioned something about that there it's a low-code focus. Can you talk a little bit about mm -hmm. that? The approach to low code is in two, two different areas. The first area would be what we're talking about, a little bit the, the user interface. A lot of the things you can do with Fabric are visual, and it kind of guides you, hey, this is your source. Let's grab your data. How much data do you want? Where do you want it from? What format do you want it in? And what transformations do you want to make it on, on it? You know, For example, pipelines, you can make a lot of transformations that you would normally do in SQL, right? You would do uh, SQL queries and SQL commands to transform the way your data is coming in into something that you want to use, such as aggregates, for example, grouping bys, or uh, just sums, any of these like uh, helpful transformations. You can do it in a visual way, just selecting different icons. And then the other area around the low code is it's coming up. It's not yet. Uh, publicly available to use, the announcement is public, but uh, the integration with AI, the co-pilots, like Microsoft were focused on the era of co-pilots, this yeah. AI assistance that through natural language can just help you on your daily work. So this is gonna be integrated into Fabric and there's a lot of very, very good information online. So I would definitely recommend to check it out if you're interested, but basically using natural language to say, hey, I have this data, how do I make this a valuable aggregation and then the co-pilot might suggest a couple uh, sql queries that you could run for your data to end up in the in the way you want it so for people who don't have like very specific knowledge this future integration will also like help bring the tool more to a like low code state okay then just to be clear that sounds really cool but just to be clear that's not available today you can read about it there's information about it yes that's exactly available today um and uh but the and what about the um uh, Fabric itself, is that available today? Yes, Fabric right now is in public preview, so anyone okay. can access it uh, just through the Power BI service. I mean, now we've changed it to, to Fabric, right? That's the, that's the name. You won't see Power BI much around, except for using the Power BI part of Fabric. But basically, the way you access Power BI is with your same, sorry, the way you access Fabric, it's with your same Power BI account. And you can just like sign up for the free trial because it's uh, in public preview right now. You mentioned something about one lake before, and I actually talked to our colleague Mike Shelton about this a while ago, but not in, in this context. Tell me a little about that in terms of fabric. Exactly. Uh, so one lake is very important for fabric. It's the way you store your data. It's based on the lake house pattern, which is a pattern of bringing your data basically as it is and storing it in parquet files uh, and then making it available through a schema on read architecture. But basically, the idea around one lake and fabric is that you have all these different analytic services that are going to help you build your data and bring it to the, the state, the current state, the, the state of the of the insights, right? But all these tools work in different ways. You can use SQL on your data. You can use a Spark, the Python Spark. You can use Power BI uh, analytic services you can use Power Query to modify your data. So all, all these are different compute engines. So what the one link is doing is instead of tying your data to your compute engines, say you have like, oh, this data is, is for SQL, it's in SQL format. This data is for Power BI, it's, it's in its own format, you know? Instead of doing this, you keep all your files as Parquet files, which are like optimized, an optimized file type to store uh, just data uh, on 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 a lake house on, on a data lake on a file on a folder structure system and basically the different components of fabric will access your data and modify it in whichever way and then they will write it out as parquet still what does this do this makes it so that there is only one copy of all your data you don't need to duplicate a file you don't need to bring in a file a sql and then turn it into something else to, to be able to do what you want to do with it, but it's only one copy of the data. Also, this data is not locked in to any specific type of compute. If you want to bring your data out with any engine that can read Parquet, you can still do it. So it's accessible from anywhere. 
And third of all is the performance implications of this. We have two new performance features that are very exciting. The first one being a shortcut. Shortcuts are symbolic mentions of data within this file system structure. Uh, for example, if you had data on an S3 bucket, and this is publicly available as of now, you can create a shortcut to that bucket from within Fabric, and you won't need to replicate that data in Fabric. So if you have a lot of files on Amazon, for example, and we're adding availability for other services as well in the, in the future, you don't need to do that whole copy data process, which mm -hmm. takes a while, and you don't need to have that data duplicated in two different storage systems. You can bring your shortcuts if you have existing ADLS, Azure Data Lake uh, files uh, in your Azure tenant or in another Azure account, you can also create this, these shortcuts that point to the data without having to make a copy of it. And the second thing is that we have the same thing for Power BI. Power BI exists in two modes to bring in data. That is import mode, where you bring all the data into your Power BI model and you cache it and you store it and any, any reports are going to run off that model that data set that you already have in power bi using its own compute and you also have the direct query mode which is going to send a sql query to your source at any time you refresh your data but now we're introducing the direct lake mode which works as the direct query but without having to query a data source because it's already sitting on your data lake so you're benefiting from this added performance and I've tried it myself recently and it, it's it makes a huge difference you have like a big data set with like 50 more million rows and in normal power bi you would expect it to take a couple seconds to load your graphs right but in this case you can like add slicers add filters uh, change visualizations very quickly and you can see a huge difference in performance because we're cutting this process of either having to have the data locked into Power BI or having to query it every time. It just goes straight from the lake all the way into Power BI. So very big performance improvements with uh, one lake as well as cost savings. Oh, interesting. Final question. Where do I go to learn more about Microsoft Fabric? Well, the one place where you would go to learn Fabric and any other uh, Azure or Microsoft technologies would be Microsoft Learn. Okay. We will include a link to the specific Fabric page in this video, but there are a lot of helpful resources in, in Microsoft Learn, and it has some tutorials, some handsome tutorials that you can work through. Oh, great. And as well as some like documentation just explaining in much further detail what we've talked about today. So it's a very, this page that you have right here is a very good page to I'm use. I'm looking at it right now. It is learn.microsoft.com slash fabric, which if I had Excellent. to guess, that's probably what I would have guessed it would be. <laughs> All right, this has been really educational for me. This is an area that I don't know a lot about and you have taught me quite a bit in the last 20 minutes. So thank you so much, Juan. <laughs>